Well, August is over. It's time to rank some movies. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm counting down my best and worst movies from August. We're going to do the tier list format, and at the end of the video, as always, I will be ranking them. There should be time codes in the description, and I need your comments down below. What was your favorite and least favorite movie in the month of August that was a new release? And if you guys like these monthly recap videos, smash that thumbs up button. We'll keep going if you all want to see that. But it's going to be a long one. We're going to try to move quick. I say that all the time. Host, let's start with a, a couple of films that I didn't get the chance to review on this channel. My goodness, guys, what a huge surprise this was. Now, it is right in that middle range between being good and great, but I am going to uh, I'm going to go on the good tier, but it is very close. I genuinely had a, a great experience. I got scared. And it could be, you know, Zoom's a big thing right now. We're going through the pandemic. Everybody's at home. Uh, but they filmed this in quarantine. It is a Shutter original, less than an hour long. And all it is, it's this Zoom session between a bunch of friends who are trying to conjure up a demon. And uh, even though some of the jump scares were a bit cliche, and it's very familiar in nature, I thought there were some really good moments in Host and uh, a massive surprise for me this year. The next film that I didn't talk about on YouTube, but I did log on Letterboxd, maybe I should do a review. You know why? Because this is one of my favorite movies of the year. Now, it goes by two names. So in certain areas, this movie is called A Shadow of Violence, uh, but I'm going to refer to it as its original name, and that's Calm With Horses. And even though A Shadow of Violence is cooler, Calm With Horses actually describes what this film is maybe a bit better. It takes place in Ireland. It's about a boxer who is uh, in cahoots with a drug-dealing family, but he's also trying to be a good father to his autistic uh, son. So he's kind of torn between these two worlds, and uh, it's a movie all about testing his patience, but uh, also testing a lot of our characters involved here. The cast is excellent. One of the best performances I've seen of the year from Cosmo Jarvis, who just crushes it. Barry Coogan, who I'm a massive fan of. Uh, this is a slow-paced movie with some, some epic shots. I mean, just a beautiful film to look at. The pacing is not going to work for everyone, but if I could recommend one movie to you all that maybe you've not heard of, it is Calm With Horses. Huge surprise. Top movie, one of the top movies of the year for me, uh, and it's a huge recommendation. Another huge recommendation is a movie called Boys State, and I'm going to go ahead and throw that on the great tier as well. Building a representative-based government from the ground up in Texas is what a thousand boys are doing as they gather together future politicians, one side or the other, and uh, have some of the craziest experiences, and, and this is real. I mean, you watch this, and it almost feels scripted. That's how well written it is, even though it's not written. It's just a documentary showcasing the lives, and we really we focus on a couple of individuals, uh, some major standouts. I mean, some kids that I'm going in, and I'm seeing, okay, where are they now? Uh, one in particular that has a very emotional moment at the end of the movie, and uh, one of the nicest kids you'll ever see. Uh, but this this was great. This was great. Unexpected Jim from A24. Talk about him all the time. Uh, just a wonderful documentary. Just a cool idea in the first place and something that honestly I didn't even really know existed until now, but it's just this massive deal with thousands of kids and uh, it's well made. It's well edited. It is very cinematic and Boy State is on Apple Plus uh, for you guys to check out. I hope you do. It's genuinely a great movie. Phineas and Ferb. Candace against the universe. Austin, how are you going to compare Phineas and Ferb the movie to these other films? Look, for what it was going for, for its audience, for fans of Phineas and Ferb, I thought this was genuinely a good movie. I think it works. Now, again, the comparison game is tough when you're comparing Phineas and Ferb to Host. That's why making a video like this is difficult. Uh, but fans will really enjoy this. Candace's journey, uh, again, it's always been this internal struggle against her brothers, but now even more so because she's trying to find her place in the universe. Great songs, breaking the fourth wall multiple times, and just really good moments. So, again, it's Phineas and Ferb, So, uh, but I'm a huge fan, a lot of nostalgia. This movie is on Disney Plus right now. So American Pickle dropped on HBO Max. I believe their first original film and I thought it was okay. I think Seth Rogen's performance here is just amazing. 
He plays two distinctly different characters. One who was pickled 100 years later. He's back. He's better than ever, except he's very out of place. So a lot of out of time jokes, right? So you're mixing that in with Seth Rogen's other character, who's just a modern guy who's trying to figure himself out. And it becomes this uh, this giant, uh, somewhat epic battle between the two. That is uh, interesting. For sure. This movie is interesting. It raises a lot of really good questions. It dives into a couple things. My issue is more kind of the script and the balance between humor and drama that I don't quite think they nail. Uh, But it's cute enough for me to say it's an okay movie with a magnificent performance from Seth Rogen. He's really good. Excellent. Let's talk about Bill and Ted. Which, you know, you could say, I think a lot of people say it's a great movie. Uh, I actually have seen a lot of people who don't like the movie at all. That's okay, I get that, but I thought it captured the spirit of the original two perfectly. I think Face the Music is a huge surprise, especially when you look at what this could have been. You look at some of these other comedy sequels, like a Zoolander 2 or a Dumb and Dumber 2. Oh no, Bill and Ted 3, they're doing it again, but it's so well written. Now, it becomes a bit convoluted in the third act, uh, but well intended, and I just really like a lot about this movie. The performances... Keanu and Alex, they're so good, but it's kind of the newcomers. It's like your Samara Weavings of the world, and those two girls, I mean, fantastic in the movie The Daughter. So uh, overall, had a great time with this, and um, it is a good movie for sure. The New Mutants. I mean, we're going to stay on the positive side here, guys. I thought it was okay, and that is the best possible thing (laughs) I think that anybody could have said about The New Mutants, Uh, and I think it is one of the best things because... This has got a low score on Rotten Tomatoes. I and Sean Chandler and like a handful of other people are the only ones that's, you know, not the best review. It's a 6 out of 10. Uh, but are the only ones that have given it a slightly positive score because I think the movie knows what it is. I liked the horror elements a lot, even though I wanted more. The script is messy and the third act is just a mess entirely. I just, I didn't like it. It is a mess. Uh, but the powers are cool. I think the action is interesting. I like the haunted house concept surrounding these kids. So enough there. I've talked about New Mutants a lot this weekend on Film Strippers and on my YouTube channel. Um, But I think it will have its fans, even though I can definitely see the critiques. Because it's not the best X-Men movie, for sure. Wow, I can't believe I'm doing this. Actually, maybe more than any of these films, my most anticipated movie is the first one today. Peninsula, the sequel. Well... The loose sequel, not storyline-wise, but the same world, to Train to Busan is, uh, is meh for me. Now, it is kind of close to that okay tier. I think there's a lot of good here. Some really fun action, uh, but the issue with this film, and I think a lot of it comes down to the comparison game. That, that, that's a struggle for me. Um, but um, you're comparing it to the first, which was just so uh, much less convoluted, not as much to it. The characters, I think they were fleshed out a bit better. Things make more sense in the first Train to Busan, and this one, it had that Mad Max feel, which I kind of enjoyed, uh, but I didn't really gravitate towards the characters at all. I didn't connect very well, and I think a lot of that has to do with the script. Again, great action set pieces, a fun third act for sure, good moments, but I think the movie and the script for me, personally, is a bit meh. Uh, Here's a movie that I didn't review that I just watched on Amazon Prime, and it's called Get Duped. And I thought this hip-hop-inspired comedy that follows these four boys in the wilderness when they're really not used to this, but they're trying to escape this individual who is hunting this, I thought it was good. Get Duked will go down as one of those movies that just isn't watched as much as it should be. It is chaotic. I mean, it is full of anarchy. There are music videos in the middle of the movie um, that really made sense because of one particular character and his aspiration to be a rapper. And I I liked the chemistry between the four guys a lot. And you're trying to uncover what's actually going on, who the Duke actually is, and uh, who's chasing them, hunting them down, and why they're there in the first place. And you know why they're there, but uh, the journey was interesting, and I really like the style of this movie. Some great music. Some of the best music, maybe one of my favorite soundtracks of the year. It's insane. It really is. It did come maybe closer to being on the okay tier than the great tier, because uh, within that style, it does become a bit convoluted, and it's very slow-paced at points in the movie. Almost to the point where you're kind of being like, all right, can we speed it up a little bit? But overall, Get Duked, I think it worked really well, and I thought it was a pretty good film. Next up, She Dies Tomorrow, 
this is a film that I didn't get a chance to review. I, a lot of my reviews are on Letterboxd. Well, all of my reviews are, but uh, yeah, this one just didn't really work all that well for me. And I know a lot of individuals liked it, but directed by Amy Sumetz, it's about this girl who believes she's going to die tomorrow, which sends her down this extremely emotional spiral. I'll say this, it's a beautiful film to look at. The colors, the visuals, the, the color correction in general, I think is really, really good. I think the look and the technical aspects of the movie uh, work. It's well directed. I just didn't love the script and I didn't really connect to any of the characters. I think there's my issue within She Dies Tomorrow. I don't want to dive too deep because I, I fleshed out my thoughts pretty thoroughly on Letterboxd, but She Dies Tomorrow, um, I, I just didn't connect. I'll say that as well as I needed to. Looks great, uh, but the story itself, it just wasn't as interesting as I wanted it to be. So that's on the mat here, unfortunately, as is Magic Camp. Now, this is Adam Devine. A lot of things that go into this movie that uh, kept it from appealing to an audience because I think Disney just wanted to hide it for multiple reasons, and I won't go into why, um, other than the fact that maybe they just didn't have confidence. I definitely think that's a reason for it. Um, I didn't hate it, though. I thought it was, you know, it was meh. It had some elements, had some fun. But again, it's a Disney-fied movie that we've seen before. It feels very much like something like Camp Rock, except this time it's magic instead of music. Uh, it probably it's more well-directed uh, on a cinematic level than something like Camp Rock because it's not a Disney original. It's something that could have played in the theater. Uh, but Disney Plus, they said, we'll take it. Definitely flew under the radar, as did Work It. Now, Work It is a movie that I didn't think would be okay, because it has that Netflix stigma. It's all about a high school girl, and she wants to get into college, but she can't get in. She has to do something different, something special. So she decides to learn how to dance, and she's not a good dancer. That was my fear for this film is, oh, they're going to make her a good dancer all of a sudden. But I did like seeing the progression starting out bad, slowly getting better, uh, the team becoming a little bit more successful. It's definitely a cliche. It is full of cliches. But I also thought the choreography was really well done. I don't think the dance scenes maybe were as impactful as the film intended, but good elements within Work It. And then... Come to the tax collector, and uh, if you're a fan watching this of the tax collector, I apologize for this next move. Oh boy, and I, and I say that because if you guys missed my review, if you missed the controversy, apparently I'm a horrible person because I didn't like a movie that most other critics and individuals didn't like. I think this film has found a fan base uh, that harassed me in my comment section because I didn't like the tax collector. Here's the funny thing, I'm actually, I gave it a higher review than most critics. And I gave it a higher review than most audience members. It does not have a good audience score. This is not a good movie. It is jumbled and sloppy, and it has nothing to do with the race aspect of the film. That's one comment I got multiple times. Austin, is it because of this? Is it because of that? It's like, no, it's because it's bad. <laughs> I can tell you where good crime movies are. Something like a Sicario, something like a Narcos on Netflix. We have seen goodness, greatness in that genre before. This is not that. This is messy. This is a horrible script. A horrible script. And I'm so passionate because it was just a beatdown in my comment section. And I'm just like, y'all, I mean, I get it. Not a lot of movies this year, but... There are better movies than The Tax Collector. I wanted it to be good. I was rooting for David Ayer. But I've seen much better crime films. I've seen much better performances. Uh, and Shia LaBeouf, who was, it looked as, as if he was the main character in the movie, he was barely in the film. I don't, I don't get it. All right, I need to cool off Project Power. It's one at points that uh, got close to being good, but I am going to throw it on the okay tier, just because at the end of the day, I think the script was a bit of an issue here. Um, full of these superhero cliches that we have seen before, even though there were moments, right? Just the whole concept of taking a pill, getting the powers, there were moments that really worked. I thought Joseph Gordon-Levitt was great. Uh, Jamie Foxx crushed it. Uh, a few subplots that I didn't love, but overall, this was a fun superhero movie on Netflix that couldn't quite get past its cliches, but, uh, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, I do think there are some moments that kind of elevate it above a couple of these other okay films. Now let's talk about The Binge, another movie I didn't get to talk about on Hulu, and I'm going to go ahead and throw that on the meh tier. So think The Purge, except crime. You're applying that to drinking and drug use and all of these things that kids, you know, they do anyway, but 
at this point, is legal. One night only. That's the binge. And um, there's some fun moments in this film, for sure. Uh, I think it got too caught up in its own shtick. Uh, I think there were times when I said, man, that's that's really good. And I like the chemistry between these actors. Vince Vaughn is in this movie, and his character is funny. But the whole thing that they're building up to, this big party, this event at the end, they didn't pay off for me. I'm just like, what is this? What's going on? It's not as funny as other aspects of the movie. And again, there's a scene with the cow, which I thought was pretty funny. And there's this, there's this musical number in the middle because something happens to our characters. So I'm like, man, this could work. It's just... The package didn't quite work. So it's on Hulu for you guys to check out, but unfortunately, the binge didn't quite do it. Um, and same goes with Chemical Hearts, another movie I was looking forward to, but it just um, it didn't work. So you've got a high school transfer. She's finding her new passion. She begins uh, with a school newspaper, and she meets a guy, and our guy, uh, they you know have this thing going. It is a, it's a classic teen romance with some really good elements to it. I liked our main actress here. She has a lot going on in her life that uh, maybe they didn't explore as much as I wanted them to, but she is full of a lot of um, great elements that could have made this movie good. Our main protagonist, he wasn't as relatable as I needed him to be, and it does slowly start to fall into that trap that you see in these teen rom-coms. It's like, oh no, we're doing this and we're doing that. Um, it ends in a way that I think uh, works in the unexpected way. But overall, Chemical Hearts, I just didn't gravitate towards these characters. And I didn't love their chemistry together. Separate, they were fine. But together, I don't know. All right, guys, let's move quick. We're running out of time here. So if you're a fan of Superman, I think uh, you will enjoy this movie. If you want to see the start of the origins of this new DC universe, there's a lot of familiar elements here that we've just seen before. We've seen the origin of Superman. We've seen these other characters. You've got Martian Manhunter. You've got Lobo. Some great moments with those characters, especially Lobo, but the villain maybe is a bit generic. I love the art style. I love the animation. It's different. It starts out, you got to get used to it. It's like Archer, uh, but I like it because it feels different from the other movies, even though the story itself wasn't great. So at the end of the day, I think the film is okay. And same goes with the one and only Ivan. I think families are going to love this movie. I think it's the perfect film to put on, maybe watch with your kids, let your kids watch it. It doesn't go beyond that, even though I don't think it necessarily had to, and it does montage its way through a lot in that third act. So the one and only Ivan didn't quite get the job done for me. Great voice work. I thought Brian Cranston was really good. And the middle portion, a really unexpected emotional moment. So pretty solid movie overall. The Sleepover. You ready? It's what I was afraid my spy would be. This was too over the top for me to like and appreciate. I think uh, there will be families who like this. They will grow up with it like we did Spy Kids, or at least my generation. Love Spy Kids. I don't know if it holds up. I've not checked it out in a while. But I do think Spy Kids maybe appealed to adults even more because this, uh, a few too many elements, a few too many moments that makes me put it on the bad tier. I just... Um, I do think it will find an audience, but uh, not a lot of people were watching it when it came out, so I think it kind of slipped under the radar, and I understand why. Even though, Joe Manganiello, I'm a big fan of his. All right, Unhinged. First movie for a lot of people back in the theater. I didn't see it in the theater. I got a screener for it. Um, I was disappointed, though. I am going to put it on the mat tier, even though this is the one that I look at and I say, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this. I found enjoyment in it, and I was surprised that the action set pieces were great. Some of the CGI, the stunts, the, the choreography was really, really good. I didn't buy into the premise of the film as much, where it all spawns from and how unhinged he gets. I mean, I like the fact that he's unafraid of what people around him think. Some of the dialogue, and then they're throwing in these one-liners like straight from the 80s that just doesn't fit with this really serious tone. So a bit of a tonal imbalance for me, which is why I put it on the mid tier, but it's not a bad movie. For sure. You know what's not a bad movie at all? Spree. I thought Spree was actually pretty good. Uh, Joe Curie from Stranger Things. Imagine American Psycho in a car. It makes you afraid of getting in an Uber or a taxi anytime soon. This guy takes his guests on uh, not the, the most joyous of rides. I'll say that. But it's the film style. It's the way that it's filmed through your phone cameras and through your GoPros. Uh, it looks cool. It's interesting. Not a lot to connect to with our character, but some of the other characters along the way you do connect to. And again, Joe Curie proved to me in this movie that he is genuinely a good actor 
crushed the roll. Uh, not great, but good enough for sure. And finally, I think this is going to shock a lot of you because I didn't do a YouTube review for it. Uh, I watched Sputnik, and I, a lot of critics really enjoyed this movie. I have to put it on the meh tier. I, I did not really enjoy this movie all that much. At the height of the Cold War, a Soviet spacecraft lands after a mission went wrong. It's a psychologist that comes in to evaluate this guy's state, but something else is happening here. It's not just um, his recovery from this experience. Something else is at play. This has been compared to movies like Alien. Now, I, I think if you go in expecting Alien, that uh, pacing, you're not going to love it. But it wasn't even that. It, it wasn't even the slow nature, because I, I really enjoy slower movies like this, for the most part. I just didn't care about the story that they were telling all that much. And maybe it's where I expected these thrilling elements and everybody said there were some good horror moments. I just didn't really find much within this movie. I didn't find much that others found. And it's unfortunate because I heard so many great things about Sputnik. But as for me, it just didn't work all that well. So let's go ahead and rank these movies because this video has gone on way too long. So at the bottom, we're going to keep it how it is. We have the sleepover followed by the tax collector. Sorry, everybody. Next up, we're going to put the binge at the bottom of the meh tier. Followed by Sputnik. That looks good. She dies tomorrow after Sputnik. Surprisingly enough, I had more fun with Magic Camp than She Dies Tomorrow. So that is next. We'll throw Chemical Hearts in that spot. Now, th this one's tough for me because I think both of these movies are similar in nature. Um, I am going to keep Peninsula just because I think there is something there that could get that to okay. It was just missing that mark, so unhinged behind Peninsula. On the okay tier, we have Work It at the bottom, followed by the one and only Ivan. The New Mutants is next for me. And then, you know, maybe an American Pickle after that. I would say Project Power is probably the top of the okay tier. Love Phineas and Fur, but I will have to put it at the bottom of the good tier, followed by Spree. Get Dukes looks pretty good right there, followed by Bill and Ted Face the Music at the four spot. My number three movie of August is Host, and it worked out perfectly because Boy State at two, Calm with Horses. Calm with Horses, who knew? Was my favorite movie in August. Now, obviously, we're missing movies like Tenet. We're missing movies that I've already seen, like Robin's Wish and I'm Thinking of Ending Things. Those are technically September releases, at least where I am, so I'm going to put those on my September list, but they will be on my next list. I appreciate you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoy these videos and you'd like to see more, again, thank you for supporting. Thank you for leaving your comments. Stay tuned because later today, I have a review of Robin's Wish and Tenet. My review for Tenet's coming. I'm so excited.